Hello, Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today's Saturday, May 11th, 2024, and here are the readings for today. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verses 11 through 16. In those days, while the healed lame man clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up, and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One, and asked for a murderer to be granted of you, and killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And faith, which is through him, has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 3, verses 22 through 33. Let us be attentive. At that time Jesus and his disciples went into the land of Judea. There he remained with them and baptized. John also was baptizing at Aonon near Salim, because there was much water there, and the people came and were baptized, for John had not yet been put in prison. Now a discussion arose between John's disciples and a Jew over purifying. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who is with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you bore witness, here he is, baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, No one can receive anything except what is given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore this joy of mine is now full. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth, and of the earth he speaks. He who comes from heaven is above all. He who bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. He who receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. Today's gospel gives us a unique insight into the life of John the Forerunner. Elsewhere in the Gospels, our Lord says that John is the greatest man ever born of a woman. And today we see that an example in the way that he describes his relationship and that of Jesus. Because John talks about how he is not the bridegroom. The bridegroom is the one who has the bride. That is not him. It is Christ himself. And so he says... He, the bridegroom, the friend of the bridegroom, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine, his own, John's, is now full. He must increase, but I must decrease. I wonder how many of us would feel the same way if we were in his position. He is blessed with a great and tremendous piety. He has focused on serving God with every ounce of his being. We live in a time when we are constantly assailed by distractions. And in fact, we are also given messages that we must do what we can to excel, sometimes to excel beyond other people, especially if we are looking to get a particular contract with work or to have a better seat in, in an airplane or whatever it may be, all sorts of different examples of what we have where it is better for us to be first and make everyone else last. Whereas John makes it clear that he must be last so that Christ may be first. Humility 
indeed is the key. I have been blessed to hear the, the thoughts of one Thomas Merton. Now, Merton's not an Orthodox Christian by any means, but he is a monastic of the Catholic tradition. He died in 1968, just as things were starting to change in the Catholic Church. The videos that, or the audios, excuse me, that I was listening to have to do with humility. And he makes a very important point that even in the monastery where he was there in Kentucky, there was competition. Monks wanted to be the best at whatever it is they could be. And so he asked a question to this class who was studying these writings on humility, actually written by uh, St. Benedict, the, um, the great monastic himself, who set up the rules of St. Benedict. Anyway, he was making the comment that how many monks, when someone else does well, rejoices with the monk, or even with a joy that surpasses the joy that the monk himself would possess. That is the mark of true humility. And so one of the things that we can do to gauge just how humble we really are is ask ourselves when someone that we are competing with does better than us, when a friend even does better than us, do we rejoice with that friend or do we somehow feel a pang of jealousy or a wish that maybe that could be us instead of them? The true mark of a Christian is one who indeed does rejoice in the success of others, not just the success of loved ones where there's some sort of commitment, not just friends where friends are kind and, and return kindness in return, but with everyone, with our others, with our neighbors, with our enemies. Are we willing to celebrate their successes? If you think Think back to a person in your life that really had a contentious relationship with you. And how do you want them to be? Do you want them to suffer now? Do you want them to be miserable? The true mark of humility and indeed the true mark of a Christian is that when they are doing well, we celebrate just as if they were members of our beloved family. It's not easy things to do, but with God's help and with good instruction and direction, we can live this kind of humble life, just as John, the greatest man ever born of a woman, shows in his example in what is happening today in the reading of, gospel, of the Gospel of St. John. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.